Hello everyone, my name is Orestes and in this tutorial we're going to see how to roll a cube. Now, unlike the wheel, the cube has some special uh, conditions. So, the wheel rotated right from the center and it stayed level this way, but the, to rotate a cube, as you can imagine, uh, the rotation happens from the front corner all of the time, so the pivot is is not in the center of the object and for every rotation the pivot moves to the to the next uh, corner so let's uh, jump right into cinema 4d and see how we can tackle this problem here in cinema 4d i have a cube with sides of 100 centimeters and if i try to rotate this you will see that it rotates right from its center so I would like to rotate from the edge and for this I'm going to create a custom pivot object. So we can start by creating a null and bringing it along the edge here. I'm going to name it accordingly as pivot and let's visualize it as well. Let's make it a little uh, cube in 3D. All right. And I'm going to parent my a geometry cube to this pivot object. So if I rotate the null because the cube is a child now you can see it takes it along with it and I can animate it as I would expect it. So let's start by adding a few keyframes on this. It should be the rotation B because it's the blue one and let's go to frame 30 and add our second keyframe. Alright, so now I need to animate the second step, but if I keep rotating my null, it just drives the cube into the floor. I want it to rotate from the next uh, edge right now. So I need to bring my, my pivot object, I need to bring it to the next edge. If you remember, it's 100 centimeters, and I want to take my cube and bring it back. So. I will be able to offset my null object while keeping the cube at the same world position. All right, so let's try to do that. Let, I'm going to do a couple of times here and I will add a position keyframe for my null object. And I'm going to move, let's try to move 10 frames forward to visualize this a bit. And like we said, bring it forward 100 centimeters. And now we need to counter animate the cube to do the same motion but backwards. So let's animate it. Now if you move the cube here, you will see that it's the position Y that is actually changing. Because the cube has the null, which is the parent, has already rotated. You can see that if you enable the local uh, handles, that it goes along its Y axis. Now to make things simpler, I could keyframe all the positions but I'm just going to keyframe the XY position because it's only going to move along this plane here. Alright, long story short, let's animate the cube backwards and let's see the animation now. It should be staying in place exactly like that. Alright, so we can see what kind of motion we made and I'll just make it last one frame instead of 10 frames. So in just one frame, the pivot jumps to the next position. So I can already start uh, rotating right now. I managed to animate it to go to the next edge. So let's go to frame 60 and animate one more step here. So another 90 degrees, we will go to 180 degrees. So we managed to animate two steps. So we're going to do the same process to bring the pivot from the back edge into the front edge again. So I'm going to do it a little bit faster. Let's keyframe the pivot and I'm going to keyframe the, the cube as well at the same time and move the frame forward. Select the parent and this time by holding 7 I can move the parent without moving the child. I will add a keyframe. Now both of these objects have changed their coordinates. The child also changed its coordinates. So I'm going to add a second keyframe here. And now with the pivot in the front, we are ready to 
animate the third rotation. So let's go to frame 90 and animate yet another step. So now we have animated three steps for this cube. Like we did last time, let's see how we could automate this process. So I'm going to hold Shift and F3 to go to my timeline and delete all the keyframes. All right, so I want to have a control that when I'm moving it, the cube is going to roll automatically. So I'm going to make a new null, name it global control, and let's parent everything to this null so it's all together. As I'm moving this global control, the cube is moving but it's not rolling. So let's start doing this. Let's make an Expresso setup. And I know that the driver is going to be the position X of the global control. So let's take the global control and I want its position X to be the driver. And I want the pivot object to roll on the rotation B. So this is going to be driven. And we need a range mapper to connect the two. So let's make the first connection here. OK, so what are the values here? As I move this, well, let's take the, a look at the pivot here. If I rotate it 90 degrees, it's going to move. It's going to offset the cube exactly one side. And as we remember, one side is 100 centimeters. So basically, every 100 centimeters that I offset the cube is going to be rotating 90 degrees. So let's set this from 0 to 100 centimeters. The output range is going to be degrees and it's going to be from 0 to 90. So let's connect this and let's see what we did here. Okay. Well, basically it's rotating correctly, but the pivot is making the cube roll because the pivot is actually moving along with the global control. But we want the pivot to stay in place, right? So the pivot is going to have to counter the position, counter animate the position like we did earlier. So let's make a new range mapper and name this position. And le let's name the other one rotation to be more readable. All right, so again, for every 100 centimeters, we want this to move back 100 centimeters. If we take a look, it's the position X, and it's already at 50 because it has an offset from the center, half a side. So it's going to go from 50 minus 100 centimeters to minus 50, right? So first of all, let's con let's bring it as a port as well, and we want here from 0 to 100. Let's set this to user defined as well it will go from 50 to minus 50 and connect this as well. So now the pivot should stay static and it should rotate as well as I move the global control. All right, but the problem is it goes into the floor. So what I want to do is to repeat this animation that I rigged instead of continuing. I already set my range limits here. So as it exceeds these limits, I would like the animation to cycle and I can do that with the modulo function but what is modulo? so modulo is a, a very useful mathematical function that we can create loops with mathematics basically it's the leftovers of a division but uh, let's take a look how it works so let's say we have a series of 10 numbers And let's take the number of 2 and divide it with this. But to make it simple, let's just see how many times the number 2 fits into one of these numbers. Right? So in 1, it fits basically 0 times. In 2, it fits 1 time. In 3, it still fits 1 time. In 4, it fits 2 times. 5, it fits 2 times as well. In 6, it fits 3 times. 3 times in 7 four times in eight, still four times in nine, and five times in ten. All right, so this is our, our division, basically. But uh, it doesn't fit exactly in every number, right? Now, to make it simple, let's just start 
with uh, the first one here and let's see the leftovers. So the leftovers, two fits into exactly uh, one time. There are no leftovers, right? So let's make another line like this. Now two fits one time in three and then you have one leftover. So one leftover here. It fits exactly two times in four, no leftovers. It fits two times in five, but you have one leftover. And it fits exactly three times in six, so no leftovers. It fits three times in seven, but you have one leftover. So you can see I'm repeating the same pattern. The leftovers of the division is basically your modulo and uh, it's cycling. Even though your divisions are ascending, the numbers get increasingly larger. The modulo, they keep the same, uh, the same range and they are just uh, cycling the same pattern, right? So we can try something like three. <coughs> Let's start uh, exactly by, by the number of three here. So it fits exactly one time in three, it fits one time in four, and it fits one time in five. Let's just draw the lines down here. All right, and then it fits two times in six, two times in seven with leftovers, and two times in eight. And then it fits exactly three times in nine and three times in 10. So if we take a look at the leftovers, which we can also say modulo here. So what's the modulo? As you can guess, we will get a pattern. Now with the two, we got just a binary pattern here. We start to get more numbers. Let's uh, see it. Here it's zero. Then at four, is the leftover is one. At five, the leftover is two but at six, it becomes zero again. And then at seven, the leftover is one. At eight, the leftover, it fits two times, but you have leftover of two. At nine, you have leftover of zero again. Then at 10, you have a leftover of one, and so on and so forth. So this is your pattern here, which starts repeating. Back to Expresso. The input here is the series of the numbers, while the input range, the lower and the upper, are the number which, which we will divide it. Let's select both our range mappers here, enable the modulo. So now as it exceeds the 100 centimeters, it should start over on the outputs. It should start from zero again. So let's uh, see it. As it exceeds 100 centimeters, it's gonna start over. So my animation looks really good, but as I, as we can see from the texture, the orientation of the pivot is being reset every time it's make it makes a new step, and that's of course because that's what we told it to do. So I would like to counter this also. I would like every step to add 90 degrees to the orientation of the cube. And I'm going to use the cube to do this because the cube is not rigged yet. It's free for me to use. And we want its rotation B. So every 90, every 100 centimeters, basically, I want this to add 90 degrees to its orientation. So it's resetting it will not be visible. So let's take the rotation range mapper here to be based on that. If I connect this, and I connect this to the cube, of course, it's going to do the same thing that the pivot is doing, and it's going to rotate as I'm moving it. So it's, it has double rotations right now. Even though the cube is adding, it's doing its part. It's adding the 90 degrees rotation. It's just I don't want it to interpolate at all. So what's the way to not interpolate? Instead of saying from the distance from 0 to 100, you know, do the rotation, I will say for the number of steps, you know, from 0 to 1, do one 90 degrees rotation. 
Okay, so how do I convert the distance into number of steps? I'm going to divide it because if I divide the distance with the amplitude of a one step, I will get the number of steps. So let's divide it by a hundred basically. So at 100, I will get one. At 200, I will get two steps. At 300, I will get three steps, etc. All right, so I made it. Now, if I connect it here and I say, instead of zero to 100, well, zero to one, it's gonna do the same thing because, because it gets the in-between steps. I don't want the in-between steps. It tells, it tells it, you know, it goes, you have 1.5 steps. I don't care about that. I, I just want one or two. So let's see the result here. So we can see it has decimals here. That's the thing I need to get rid of. I need to delete the decimals. All right. So there are a couple of ways to delete the decimals. One way is to just set this to integer and then it deleted the input here. So it's dividing by 100. And you can see there are no integer, there are no decimals here, and indeed it's working, right? So I can set it to animation refresh, so you can see it live, two steps, one step, etc., zero steps. Uh, but this is not a perfect solution because if you had something instead of, if you had the less than one. Basically, if you needed decimals for the division, <coughs> you're losing it. So let's set it back to real. Again, type the input here because it's losing it. There is uh, other ways to delete the decimals, such as a float function node. So let's go to an expression here, float func, and set this to floor. It's going to do the same job. It's going to delete all the decimals. So let's see the result here. So you can see instead of 0 0.009, I'm getting zero. And as I'm moving it, it only is going to change after you reach one, right? So it's adding 90 degrees rotation at every step. Okay, hopefully you didn't find this too confusing. And you can see that I, we actually rigged it, which is great, but we're not done yet. Let's go to the most interesting part, which is making it completely procedural. All right, so let's see what is based on the size of the cube. One side is 100 centimeters, but let's make it a variable. So now we put an absolute 100 centimeters number. Let's use the size X as a variable here. All right, so let's replace everywhere we put the size uh, with this one, with this node. So we put it here on the division, of course. So let's replace it. It's going to be uh, dynamically updated. So on my range mappers, it's the input upper, of course. So let's set this as the input upper. On my position range mapper, it is again the input upper. But it's also these guys. This is half side forwards, half side backwards. So let's uh, fix this. Let's let's bring this here. Divide by two, basically. So this is half side, half side forwards. Let's go here. It's the lower one. So output lower. And we need to make it negative. So let's make a negate node here, which will be the output upper, half side backwards. All right, do we have it anywhere else? Well, if we take a look at the cube, its coordinates are also based on its side. In order to stay on the floor, it needs to be half side up on the position Y. And because its parent is a pivot, is half side backwards from it. So let's uh, let's set this here again. Position X is the negative one, while position Y is the positive one. So having done that, I don't think there was something else. We can see it's still working here. Okay, first of all, you can see it breaks if it goes to values less 
than what you defined as your as your range here so your minimum input is zero if it goes below zero the modulo is not going to behave as you expected so you need to make you need to make different conditions for negative if you need the negative values but we're not going to get into this into this tutorial because it will just grow too big um, so we basically finished our express so here we made it completely parametric let's change the size and see how that behaves so now the the steps should still be working and the cube you can see it stays on the floor unless it goes to negative size I might as well go to my range mapper actually so all of my range mappers here and clamp the lower one because it's not going to work anyway so now it's not going to get into the floor at least and you can see that as you're changing the size of the cube that the expression is still working all right i hope you enjoyed this tutorial and i will see you next time